So you uh, presented a, a four-phase process to essentially return students and faculty to the campus for the fall. It looks like phase three uh, is really kind of the key phase in terms of repopulating the campus. Walk us through those efforts and what needs to go right in the coming weeks for this plan to actually materialize. Well, it, it is a complicated plan and we're dealing with unprecedented uncertainty as everyone is. Is that, And you're absolutely right, phase three is the key. We're in the, the beginning of phase one where our research and clinical operations will begin repopulating next week. Uh, that'll give us uh, our first test at uh, how we're using uh, PPE and social distancing and other health protocols uh, to keep our uh, staff and uh, researchers safe. Phase three begins with the repopulating of the campus, uh, and it'll be a very different college experience for our students. It's, that we'll have very different living conditions within our residences and uh, a very different kind of educational environment where we de uh, deliver classes both uh, residentially and remotely simultaneously using what we call a learn from everywhere technology that we're developing inside the university. Uh, the key to make this happen is going to be uh, testing. Uh, we've spent a lot of time on trying to decide and develop testing capability within the university. We'll announce later today that we're standing up our own PCR-based testing facility. We have the capacity to do mm -hmm. that as a major research university. Uh, and symptom tracking, case management, isolation, uh, contact tracing all have to be implemented inside the institution to make this work uh, over time. Uh, it's going to be very different living conditions yeah. for our students, and very different classroom experiences. Given the fact that it is going to be such a different experience for students, what is your expectation in terms of enrollment, both uh, from students here in the U.S. and also foreign students? Well, there, it's a great question. Is that what we're trying to do is create the safest uh, environment we can conceive of within the institution for living, learning, and for working for our faculty and staff. Uh, we believe from all of the data we're getting from our students and from their parents is that students want to continue their education. And they want to continue it in the residential mode if possible because it's uh, the best learning experience. Uh, you know, our hope is that the majority of our students will want to come back and be with us either in person for the entire semester or remote part of it. You ask a great question about international students because international students are a very big unknown because it's not just about us creating the experience. It's also about the situation for travel from their home country to the United States and the visa situation, whether or not they'll be allowed to come into the country uh, with a student visa. We do know that a lot of our international students, especially our graduate professional students, are still in the United States. They've never left. A question about how the campus is going to culturally work. Unless college students have changed dramatically in the past 20 years since I was there, a lot of students, most, are not going to socially distance. So uh, what is your plan as far as what to recommend for students, uh, as far as how they gather, in, in how large a groups they gather? Is there any plan to, to make sure professors in certain demographics stay a certain distance away for safety? How are you thinking through all those things? You, you've got to think through all of these issues. And uh, we know that humans do not like to socially distance. I mean, this is not... Uh, we're not, uh, that's not in our genetic makeup. And what we've got to do is create the right kind of environment where students can form. And the word we're sort of using at this point is households. So there are a group, going to be a group of students who we will socialize and will be closer together and will be treated uh, within testing and tracing differently than the whole student body. Because it, we've got to create an environment where students have some collection of people they can be close to. That's the residential experience. At the same time, what you're trying to do is keep those groups from mixing uh, in terms of, uh, in, in, from an infection point of view, mixing with the whole student body all the time. Uh, you, you talk about faculty and staff. Well, they're where the most vulnerable population is, our, our faculty who are more senior than the others. And we're going to have to create environments where they feel comfortable in the classroom or let them teach remotely. 
President Brown, I wonder, um, long term, do you see a, any kind of structural shift in demand for a college degree, um, either because of finances or just the appeal or usefulness of having one in this new economy? And I wonder, to what degree does that uh, affect the way Brown thinks about admissions? Well, uh, Boston University, uh, the, uh, the way uh, we're thinking about things, and I think that everything I'm reading and seeing is that the need for residential-based education and the value of it isn't going to be changed by the pandemic long-term. Now, when I say long-term, I mean when we're on the other side of this and have an effective vaccine. Uh, but what we're seeing, which I think is a really remarkably accelerated transition, is how rapidly higher education can become flexible in terms of its delivery mode uh, for our students. We saw this in the spring when, when we were all forced to go into a remote, remote learning mode, and we're going to see it in the fall as we see different modalities being offered simultaneously for students, depending on where they are physically and where they are in terms of their anxieties about coming back to campus. And I think the learning experiences for higher education are going to be really important because what we're going to do yeah. is capture that knowledge and push that knowledge forward. So we're going to be a much more flexible industry, if you will, on the other side. And, and I think in your show and all of the people you're bringing on your show, CEOs from all kinds of sectors, I'm sure you're hearing that over and over again.